Hi and welcome to the second video where I want to um, talk about um, yeah, actually getting started uh, with using UIKit. Um, there are several ways um, where you can, how you can get started. I was thinking I would describe three that I think are quite nice. Um, one is uh, just to download the static, um, well, the, the current version as a um, zip file. Um, the second version I want to show is um, just using um, UIKit with a code pen. Um, with a code pen, yeah, I don't know if you know code pen, but it's it's quite nice to um, have a live preview in the browser and have your HTML, CSS, JavaScript in one place. Um, and the last um, version I want to show is um, actually downloading UIKit using Bower. Um, Bower is a um, like a, yeah, a package manager for front-end components, um, which is really helpful to keep um, your eye kit up to date automatically. Um, the fourth version that I don't want to show today is um, just uh, getting uh, cloning your eye kit from GitHub and having that as a repository in your own project, which is possible, of course, as well. Um, so yeah, let's start. Let's get started. I want to start with the um, UI Kit uh, starter template in CodePen. Um, this is just a very basic setup that I've uh, prepared. Oh, see, as a typo, um, and I've put that on my account. So if you want um, to get started, you can just start with this template. I'll link it down in the description. Um, so yeah, here the CSS and JavaScript are automatically loaded. So I'll just, um, we won't use that today. We'll just, well, we won't write our own CSS. We'll just use um, the prepared CSS and JavaScript from UIKit. So what do we do now? We write markup. I've prepared here already the first um, class, uh, which is helpful just to add some basic padding and uh, margin around your content. So as you, as I've mentioned in the last video, all classes from UI could come prefixed. Um, the container class is a class that um, take your, takes your element and um, like limits the width to a certain value. Um, and then the uh, UK container center modifier is um, a modifier is belongs to a certain component, in this case the UK container component, but modifies it in a certain way. In this case, of course, it centers it. Um, and then just to add some margin on top, I've added the UK margin top class. Uh, right now this might look like, well, how do I know which classes these are? Um, you'll get used to that pretty quickly and you'll recognize a, a, a pattern in the naming. Now let's just get started uh, uh, with a short uh, just yeah, see this will update live and you'll see there's um, the margin padding around it. Um, but let's do some actual stuff coming from your iKit. So I'll just uh, oops, create a um, container here. And um, at the first class, um, I just want to like, I don't know, create like a, something like a welcome a welcome page, uh, like a welcome a message, uh, and we'll and we'll add the classes later. I'll just create the content first, so um, we'll have some message here. Hello universe. I don't know. We'll have some paragraph text. Um, um, just some basic lorem ipsum, and then we'll. And I'll have some primary action um, by the universe now. Ah, okay, that's better. So um, right now we just have the default base styling that UI Kit um, gives us, but of course we want to do something more with that. We'll start with um, adding a um, what's called a panel, um, the UK panel component uh, basically just adds some block styling to our container, and in this case the div, um, and we'll oops uh, we'll add some actual styling with the modifier. In this case, we'll do use the um, panel box modifier. We see here that we get a basic box around our content. 
Um, oh, what I notice now is, um, as you might remember from the first video, um, UIKit has this concept of themes, um, and it comes with um, three default themes. In this case, I think it's the flat theme. Let me just have a quick look at the CSS that I've included here. It comes from a, a CDN. Um, yeah, okay, this is the, the, the default um, CSS, just to add some more uh, structure to our styling. I use the other style in this case. Um, and as you can see already, we have some different styling for our container here. Um, just to make it easier to see where the different elements um, start and end. Okay, this looks quite nice already. Um, now we want to have this link appear bigger, right? You want to make people actually want to buy the universe. So how do we do that? You can imagine we want to have a button. What's the button component called? Of course, UK button. Uh, let's wait for the refresh. Okay, this is nice. We have a button already, but actually it's... <coughs> It's got a bit, um, yeah, gray isn't the best color for a huge buy button, so we'll add some modifier um, to add um, some colors. The modifier for the button component that we use here is the button primary modifier. Um, I heard once I heard the question, well, why don't, if it's the blue button, why don't you just call it UK button blue or something? Um, what uh, UIKit works with, oh, sorry, what um, UIKit works with are these um, kind of code names, primary, secondary, and so on. Um, because now in this style, of course, it's blue, but in a, in a different style, it would be red or I don't know, but it will still be the primary color. So this makes sense. And now we want to have it a bit bigger as well. So we'll use the button large modifier. Okay, um, yeah, now let's uh, center the whole thing. We want to center the content inside this uh, box. So we'll just add, um, the centering comes from the text component, um, add a UK center class. Yeah, I mean, we won't get rich with this, but it will work, right? Okay, uh, and of course, I mean, of course it will um, work on smaller screens as well, but I mean, we don't really have to talk about that nowadays, right? Okay, um, oh, I don't want to overwrite the template, so I'll just fork that. And I think I'll put a link to this code in the description as well. Now, um, how long is this running already? Well, I don't know, let's have a, I'll just uh, have one or two more minutes. Um, we'll have a look at, okay, I've downloaded the package um, already, so we'll just have a look at the file structure. Um, okay, the index file is something I've written already, it doesn't come with a package, the package looks like this. Um, it has CSS files, JavaScript files, and font files. The fonts are actually just used for the icons, um, your icon uses the font awesome package that you might know, so the, the, that icon font. Um, CSS files, as you can see here, um, we have three different themes. Well, the default theme, um, which is just UIKit CSS, or the minified file, uikit.min.css, uh, and then there's um, the almost flat theme and the gradient theme. Um, and then in addition to that, we have the additional components. So whenever you use, I don't know, the date picker, you need to include that CSS file as well. Um, the JavaScript looks really similar. Um, of course, the JavaScript is independent of the theme. So we'll just have uh, one a JavaScript file and the minified uh, one. Um, and the core JavaScript um, is, of course, well, well of course, um, the core JavaScript is actually split into uh, several components as well because you don't want to load more JavaScript than you actually use on your site, which is well, pretty straightforward. Components as well, if you use the accordion component, you have to include those files. So, in minimum setup would look like this. Um, just a basic HTML file, of course, um, valid HTML5 um, doc type. Um, you include some um, CSS theme, like 
the default theme in this case, uh, no, the gradient theme in this case, and the JavaScript, um, which we won't even need uh, all the time. And now we'll, I'll just, um, oh wait, two steps. So first I'll uh, just open that empty document, so you believe me that it's actually, actually empty. And now I'll just copy the markup that we've had here now. Oops. And so that. Refresh. And there we go. As you can see, the button looks different now because in this case I've included the gradient theme. So see, this is a bit flatter. Um, um, as you can see, same markup, but um, different theme uh, results in different visualization, which is quite cool. Okay, one last thing I want to show you. Um, if you are more, ex I would say, more experienced developer, or you want to include it in your uh, larger project, um, you might want to use Bower. Just create an empty folder for that. Oops. Um, so what we do here, we'll just power install the iKit, wait for hopefully if just a few seconds, and it will automatically download your iKit. And your iKit in, our, uh, in the JavaScript requires jQuery, so um, Bower will automatically install jQuery as well. By default, it puts it in the Bower Components folder, which personally I think is quite annoying, but you can configure it to put it in your Assets folder or what have you. Um, I'll just open that folder as well, just have a look. Bower components, that's jQuery, there's your iKit. And this comes with um, the things we had in the regular download package, like the CSS and JavaScript and fonts, um, which is identical. But it also includes the less source files and uh, the um, SCSS, so the SES files. Um, so you can use this package to get started rolling your own builds and um, even further customizing it. But um, yeah, we won't have a look at that in detail today. It's just um, another version to um, just get your iKit and get started building your own sites. So I hope you got an idea on how um, you can get started with your iKit and how the um, components and modifiers work. And yeah. That's it for this video, thanks.